I've taken over the Lazy Town airship and I'm off to meet the star and creator, Magnus Sheving, to find out how we can get your kids fit and healthy. Anyone got the keys? Hello and welcome to this live and interactive web stream. I'm Vicky Lurch. Now encouraging kids to be active is hugely important in terms of their development and so who better to join me today than the creator and star of the hit kids TV show Lazy Town which launches its third series on Cartoon Eater this Saturday. Magnus Sheving, hello. Uh, hi, nice now, to be here. So good to have you here. In my airship. Well, I can't All dressed believe. up, yes. <laughs> I can't believe. A I'm in your airship and B, you're wearing a suit. Yeah, but I normally wear a superhero costume, but the, uh, I just want to dress up because you are coming. Well, that, I am honoured, honoured and touched. Now, Magnus is going to be giving us some tips on how to inspire families to lead a healthier lifestyle. So do remember we're live. If you have any questions, we've already got some coming through. If you have any at home, then just use the box on your screen and we'll do our best to tackle them over the course of the next 15 minutes or so. And if you're tweeting whilst watching the show, then just use the hashtag Studio Talk TV and we'll try and give you a mention. So Magnus, let's start at the very beginning. Lazy Town was just a seed of an idea 20 years ago oh, it sounds like an awful long time but like a, uh, yes 20 years ago it started and uh, I was in my home thinking about how can I make an idea that would motivate families to make healthy lifestyle choices so um, uh, we wanted something that had uh, was a role model uh, like sportacus who would have values for parents and uh, kids could watch it because it's a boring subject. Health is a boring subject. So we need to turn it into a game. That was, the, that was something that we would take boring things, turn it into a game. And it started as a book and then it was a live show and a radio station. For almost 10 years, I went to every kindergarten school in my country uh, for many, many years. And then we, we realized we had something. Mm -hmm. Lazy Tom was working. Obesity of Iceland started to go down. And the uh, health minister was on the news. They asked him what's the main reason. He said, lazy town. And I was like, yes. Yeah. And uh, then uh, we put it, uh, we said, let's make a TV. TV shows went around the world to over 100 countries, 170 countries, I think. And, and it was a great success. So. And it certainly is. And that little bit of magic that you have sprinkled over, quite a dry topic, as you were saying, health, certainly amongst children, um, has been hugely successful. You're in your third series on Cartoon Eater. Were you expecting that level of success? <clears throat> uh, not really. Not, maybe not like that. But we knew we had something. So because before I made it uh, or was doing it in Iceland for 10 years, I traveled the world and talked to as many parents and kids as I could. And I was always testing, like, what is it? And we found out the kids are exactly the same. They love to move. If you say, let's go to the movies, they jump up and down. Yes. And that means that kids love to move. Yes. They don't necessarily like sports, all of them, but they like to move. And if your kid doesn't move, there's something wrong. And, and parents are exactly the same wherever you go around the world. They want the kids to be safe and educated, eat right, live healthy lifestyle, go, don't uh, stay on the computer for too, too long, go to sleep, um, don't use violence, don't hurt all the kids, don't lie and cheat, maybe clean the room, this is it. So those are the laced on characters, mm -hmm. they're based on this. So that's why I think we knew we had something. So this traveled very easily around the world, there's no culture kind of thing, this is just Inside, when you're raising healthy kids, this is where you go through. So you recognize the feeling when the kid is three years old, it's my toy, it's mine, mine, mine. That's one of the characters. Or you, <coughs> kids like sounds <coughs> when they move. And There's a lot of that. <coughs> yes, a lot of yes. Because kids, when they tell stories, they will say, and then it's like, <coughs> they came and <coughs> went doing and they, they use that. That's how they speak. So that's why I think we should, we need to try to think of kids as, superheroes they are mm -hmm. superheroes from the year zero to seven this is where they are superheroes this is where they they, they move correctly they 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 go to sleep when they want to go to sleep they eat when they want to eat this is what they do they are superheroes it's us the parents we destroy them mm -hmm. when we start to take over this and try to do something else so i think we should try to let them 
keep them that way for the rest of their lives. Well, you have your very own superheroes at home. You're a dad, aren't you? So <coughs> yeah. what do you do at home to encourage your little superheroes it's, to get it's, moving? It's basically like that. When you are a, um, a superhero, you play superhero all day long, you, you want to come home and be a normal dad. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, uh, but my kids in the beginning, they live through Lazy Town. And they, I need to tell them stories. And we went through this and they... And I saw what was working. And, and if you haven't been sitting down and reading books for your kids before they go to sleep, you don't really understand exactly what it is. So, no, I don't like that, don't like this, etc., etc. But so I learned a lot from it. And then I met kids around the world. They taught me even more. So, um, but, but now my kids are older. So my kids are now my biggest critics. They say, Dad, you cannot do that anymore. You're almost 50. Are you going to do splits? I mean, you're, you're old. And I'm trying to keep fit and try to be... Yeah. Because there's, in the costume, there's only one hole in the belt. So uh, I have to try to be as fit as possible. <laughs> so it's getting harder and harder. But uh, they also respect it now even more. They understand how important it is because it comes a lot, a lot of responsibility with it. I go a lot to hospitals uh, around the world and p doctors call me and ask me, can you, this kid really need to eat something? And we would come with yogurt or walk on my hands and I bring fruit or vegetables or anything, what we call sports candy. Then there is a responsibility with it because you, 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 you turn it into a game, but it's also a really serious topic because health is something that in everybody wants to be healthy mm -hmm. because you, and you understand that better when you get older, like me, you're really young, you don't need to worry. But, <laughs> but when you get older, you, you start to understand that health is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And most people, even the richest people in the world would even pay everything to be healthy if they could. So, so I think we should not take, take it lightly. We should really think, what can we do? And mainly what parents should do is to be a little bit more like a kid. Don't be boring. And most parents are boring. They're, so you they're... think it's tapping into the child's mind. Yes. So the child probably naturally would like to be active, but it's you think the responsibility is down to the parent to make it accessible, make it fun for the child. Exactly. You can say to a kid, uh, let's say that it, when they're zero to seven, this is the golden years. This is where a, parent, a kid look up to you. This is where they uh, almost imitate everything you do. And, uh, and if you think about you're a banker, you come home and you watch the, you're on the computer always working. Uh, certainly your kid is 14 and you say, hey, you're going to stay on the computer all night long. The kid just wanted to be like the dad, and he was always on the computer, so that's what I'm doing. So why is this wrong? So I think also if, it's how you speak to them. If you say to them, you have to clean your room, it's all a mess. You say that every day, then certainly a kid, when they're five, they're going to say, I'm not going to clean the room, I'm a messy kid. But if you change it and say, clean your room because you're so organized, I know you want to clean your room because you are so organized. You say that for five years, the kid will say, maybe I should clean my room because I'm organized. Actually, it's just positive affirmations, which when you say it seems so straightforward and logical, but it's that daily grind, perhaps, you can forget to do those simple things. Yeah, because parents, nobody wants to be told what to do because it's boring. No parents want to, this is what, and Lazy never never done it. Lazy never said like, this is what you have to do. Never done this. So that's why I think it's extremely important to give them uh, ideas, like as many ideas as possible. And most parents want those kind of ideas mm -hmm. to be positive and try, but they don't know what to, how to do it. And uh, for example, average is 14 minutes that dad speak to a child. So when you work all day, you come home, it's mm -hmm. 14 minutes. And I remember for myself, my 14 minutes was mainly clean this, uh, do your homework, blah, blah, blah. There was nearly no positive. There was no fun, nice. Yeah. So you think about, hmm, wait a minute, maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe I need to do something else. So I picked up my son or, or my kids from kindergarten school, and we thought, like, let's make a game out of it. So uh, we put collars on the... Sh uh, because he didn't w put all the clothing on in the beginning when he went to school in the morning. So we said, okay, here are the clothing. Here's the collars and stripes and red and socks and hats and stuff. And we picked a movement for each one of them. So when... When I picked him up and he was wearing red socks, I have to do funny 20 kangaroo jumps. And he knew wow. that I was going to come and pick him up. So he was waiting like, wow, he's coming. My dad is coming. Not only, hi, dad. It's a but red sock red day. Red sock day. And I have to <laughs> jump. And he knew that was going to look funny. And if I had a hat, I said to him, ah, you have to stand in one leg. And he was standing in one leg for a few minutes or, or seconds. Yeah. So it was, and he wanted to do this. So it was funny. So always when we met, we laughed and had some fun. That and sounds I, fantastic. So ideas like that, what you could do.
Great. Well, actually, we've got people asking for your ideas. Thank you very much for, uh, from Maxine. Maxine says, do you think we are worse at keeping our kids active in Britain than any other European country? I would not say so. I think in England, people want to do this. They, they, I, I meet a lot of people, parents from England, that they want to do it. They, they, they don't know how sometimes. They say, it's lack. Of, number one is lack of time. They say, like, I don't have time to do this. Or I don't have the energy. I have a small kids and I'm already dead. Like, I, yeah. I don't have the energy. Or it costs too much. And, yeah. and I think there's a lot of things they can do. I don't think in England they are worse than anyone else. The food in England is, of course, both healthy and unhealthy. Mm. It's a choices. And, and health is about balance. It's how you do it. It's like, it's fine to have now and then cake and, and then you just try to live more or you move more and then you relax. And I think like uh, if you think about Yoko Ono and John Lennon were in bed for a week, it's not because they were lazy, because they were motivating the world. So I think that you can motivate your kids to be healthy. And I think in England you can easily do that. You have all the resources to do it. You you have spaces. You have yeah. uh, you have everything. It's making good choices and decisions for you and your family, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Really? Yeah. Next question then from Emma Harris. Thank you very much, Emma. She says, "How many apples do you eat a day?" <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good question. I I try I try to I just ate this morning. Actually, I was on yeah. the interview and I did I ate one. But I, I sports candy is something that I think kids could eat. The sports candy is much more fun than fruit and vegetables. And sports candy castle or sports candy something, it's much more fun. And if you eat that, you get energy and you can do stuff. Because kids want to do things. Uh, Sportig was the guy I play, the superhero. He doesn't have any superpowers. Everything he does is doable. The only thing he eats is sports candy. And that he's, that's where he gets his power. And uh, so I try to eat five a day. That's what normally people say. But I, some, some days I eat more, some uh, days I eat less. And I think you should try to spread it over the day or cut it down, eat a yeah. little bit and just up the time, just through the day. And well, for people watching at home that are probably thinking, what is he talking about? Sports candy. If you haven't seen Lazy Town, we're going to take a look now. And just a reminder, obviously, the third series is just about to kick off on Cartoon Nito. Let's take a look. <laughs> Now, how fun is that? If you haven't experienced Lazy Town, you need to. I was recently with my niece, who's two, in Pennsylvania, in uh, the States, and she just loves it. And she's just jumping around the living room the whole time, screaming happy, happy. <laughs> so I can only assume that she loves it. Uh, we've got a fan in Canada who's coming through as well, which is very exciting. And this is Josie in Canada. Hello. Uh, she says, hello, since you became Sportacus, what is the thing that makes you really proud? Uh, we can't wait to watch the new series in Canada. <laughs> yeah, we we are doing now. Uh, um, we are we are. Uh, it's going to be translated to uh, 27 languages, so it's going to wow. go around the world. And uh, in 28 days, I'm going for the next series, number four. So I have to be back in shape, and I hope it's going to be in Canada really, really soon. But uh, I I would say that what I'm most proud of is basically that. It's working. When I go around uh, the world, people come to me, uh, kids, and they start to move. And I think that's great feeling. I mean, I, I was in my hotel and there was um, somebody cleaning the room and they suddenly saw a picture of Sportago and said, are you Sportago? Yes, my kids love the show. Can I bring them to the hotel? They really love it. And I said, of course, I'd be finished working at five. They um, suddenly they called from the lobby. They said, there's a major crisis here in the lobby. You need to come down at five o'clock. There are 120 <laughs> kids in the lobby doing movements like splits and jumps and like a... And the, so, one handed press up. Yeah, one handed press up. All the business guys try to walk past it and the kids there and I I mean it is a great feeling to come from a small country like Iceland and 
suddenly kids are moving. It, it's, it's actually fantastic. Yeah, really exciting. And it doesn't become, or doesn't come, I should say, more pre-approved than Michelle Obama. What yeah. are you doing with Michelle Obama at the yeah, moment? Yeah, it's interesting because we, uh, we, we do a lot of campaign also with governments. And we, we started in Iceland to do that. And we have worked with Philip Calderon in Mexico and Change for Life in England or President now and, and the, the President wife of Chile. And then Michelle Obama is doing a campaign called Let's Move. Mm -hmm. And she uh, asked us, because we have already done a campaign called Move, and we have done it before, it fit really well with her message and campaign. So she asked me to come and I work with Sprout in the US and we did a whole thing with, uh, on, on, uh, on basically commercials that we did on NBC and Sprout and uh, for, for, for the United States, a public announcement kind of. And I went to the White House in the costume, jumping up and down and almost knocked down the, the chandelier, the crystal chandelier in the White oh, no. House. <laughs> like a, like a, and I said, oof, don't touch that. Oh, and, uh, but it was great. It was nice. And she was really nice. And she really liked things on this topic. Uh, she put the light on it. So um, it is a uh, good job, Michelle Obama. Thank Absolutely. you very much. And I wouldn't argue with a lady with arms as beautiful as hers. It's for I mean, sake, she's doing something right. Yeah, Sam, who's actually her chef, yeah. he, he's, I think he's also responsible for what, what they eat. So they are both really fit. You can see the Obama, the president, run, for example, when he's going to the podium. He jumped on it. And, and she is also very, very fit. And this woman is a fantastic uh, role model for health. Absolutely. So we need to wrap things up. We're running out of time. So you're top tips to get kids on that right path so they can then make better decisions later on in life as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, go on a Cartoon Nito website, there are some tips and, and ideas, but but mainly think that if, if I would be a parent, I would give my kids, uh, and I am a parent, and I like yeah. a, but, but, but uh, it's my, my tips would be something like this. Self-esteem is the most important. To try to mm -hmm. be positive with your kids, to build up a self-esteem, you can do it. Uh, I think also that you should turn things into a game. Have fruit and vegetables around the house, in this height, not like on the table, because kids can barely see it, acceptable that they can grab it. Uh, make ideas that maybe make a, a 52 cards that you draw something on it, and then something you have never done before, put it in a bowl, and kids can draw it every weekend. Wow, we're gonna do that. Something they've never done before. Walk on a mountain, swim in a lake or whatever. Just do something like that. Ch use music a lot because people like to move and kids like to move. So before you have dinner, just do some movement. Uh, show the kids, uh, ask them to show what is cool now. And the kids show you something and then you do something more cool when you are young, who looks really stupid and they have to move with you. Maybe it, when I was young, it was Saturday Night Fever, it was Grease, it was uh, Michael Jackson, there was all kind of move. And then, Maybe your kids can teach you something else. So music is important. I think also to use your garden, use outdoor space, everything you can. Make, turn it into a game, basically. That's what I would do. Uh, get enough sleep, try to go to sleep like Sporagos, 808. Yes. This is it. It's simple. Yeah. It is simple, and I have to say, having fun at home and being positive towards your children would be great for the parents as well. I have everyone never. Everyone wins. Yeah, everyone wins, and I think Lazy Town is that kind of program that everyone wins. And yeah. I think it, I've never met kids who are not happy when their parents smile. So I think if the more the parents smile, the more the kids is happy. Yeah. Well, you've made me very happy. Uh, but we are out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, my thanks to Magnus for joining us. And if you do want to find out more about the new series of Lazy Town starting on Saturday, the 6th of April on Cartoon Nito, then go to the website cartoonito.co.uk. Thanks you, for watching. You want to fly the airship? Yes! Bye!